the Vehicle Intelligence Quest. How smart do you drive? Where, when, and how to use a wireless phone? It's up to you. Hi, I'm Walter Beckover, your host of VIQ, the show that asks you to make the call about driving responsibly. In this edition, we're exploring the high octane world of vehicle smart. And I'm Cuppy Peterson, the driving force behind this series. Thanks, Walter. So anyway, where were we? Ah, yes, vehicle smart. Some of us are awesome drivers. It just comes naturally. And well for others. Well, it isn't so easy. Driving requires total concentration. We all have different levels of natural vehicle intelligence, or VIQ. It's easy when everything's perfect. Great weather, six lanes, and no traffic. But no matter how smart you are on the road, the road is always ready to outsmart you. Bad weather, noisy passengers, road debris, confusing signs, distracting billboards. Conditions like that make using a wireless phone an extra challenge. And for some people, driving seems to be the last thing on their mind. They're busy eating, reading, riding. Saving, putting on makeup, among other things. Smart driving will give you the edge. That's why working to increase your vehicle smart or VIQ is as important as your license to drive. In fact, it's your license to stay alive. Now get ready to challenge your VIQ. Over to my colleague Jeremy Romero. Thanks, Coopy. That's Copy. 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 Right. Distractions on the road have been a concern for a long time. Can you guess when this statement was made? Some states don't want to permit radios in cars at all. Radios distract the driver and disturb the peace. That was written over 70 years ago, back in 1930 in the Farmer's Almanac. Back then, car radios were a new gadget that worried some people who feared they might be a distraction. Like wireless phones, drivers need to use their radios responsibly. Wireless phones and radios can both be useful on long trips. Next, a chance to challenge your VIQ in another edition of What Would You Do? Check out the upcoming driving dilemma and try to solve it. And now, Jonathan Livingston with a special report. Jonathan? Thanks, Walter. There's a time and place to use a wireless phone. But how about this scenario? It's your call. Hey, Nick! You sure this is a shortcut? Yeah, that's what the map said. Hey, Abigail, this burrito I found back here tastes funny. Burrito? That's not a burrito. <laughs> I don't feel so good. Nick! Nick! You okay? There may be more than one right answer to this VIQ thinking pitch storm. If you were Abigail, what would you do? Would you A. Make a quick call for help while driving B. Pull off the road to a safe spot and make the call on your wireless phone. C. Send a quick text message while driving. D. Make a quick call using your hands-free headset. So what do you think? Well, Abigail thought her best choice in this situation would be to B. Pull off the road to a safe spot and make the call on her wireless phone. When you're driving and find yourself in an emergency situation, your wireless phone can be a big help. Pull off the road to a safe area and make the call on your wireless phone. And safe means as far off the road as possible. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Coming up next. So, it is often better to pull over to use your wireless phone. 
Some people, because of the kind of work that they do, choose to use their phone while driving, like the driver you were about to meet. We go to the field. So Sean Lapato. Sean. Thanks, Jeremy. Here's another situation to ponder. Meet Sophie. She works for an organization that raises money to build affordable homes for the homeless around the world. She's on the road a lot, speaking to organizations asking for help. So far, she's been reluctant to use her wireless phone during her long trips on the road. But she's sure she's missing some good calls that might be no home for the homeless. There may be more than one right answer to this VIQ thinking pit stop. If you were Sophie, what would you do? Would you A. Get a wireless phone and use it carefully as often as you like. B. Get a hands-free wireless device and use as often as needed. C. Stop the car and use a payphone when you need to make a call. D. Let voicemail pick up the messages and return calls when the car is not in motion. So what did you choose to do? Well, Sophie feels her best choice in this situation would be to B. Get a hands-free device and use as often as needed. Sophie's mission is important to her. She chose to get a hands-free system and feels she can still drive responsibly when she does feel the need to be on the phone. There are several hands-free models of wireless phone technologies. An earpiece, headset, or a hosted voice-activated system allow both hands to still be on the wheel. And new technologies are always in development. And Sophie still uses other smart wireless tips, like alerting callers that she's on the road so she can keep her calls short and make the point quickly or call them back. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Sean. Two hands on the wheel is genius-level driving. Now, we put you back in the driver's seat in another round of what would you do? Now, to Tracy Wickham Purcell. Tracy? Thanks, Jeremy. Here's the situation. Oscar borrows his mom's wireless phone and takes it to the beach. He instant messages his friends to find out where they're surfing. He jumps in his car and messages his friends that he's driving to meet them, and as he's signing off, he gets a short message from his girlfriend, Trudy. Oscar, did you forget? You said, today we go to the mall. <laughs> Oscar puts his phone down in the car and drives off towards the surf spot. The phone rings. It keeps ringing. He glances down and notices that it's Trudy calling. What would you do if you were Oscar? Would you A, just let it ring, let voicemail get the call, call back later, B, answer and explain the mix-up to Trudy, C, Pull off the road to a safe spot and call Trudy. Oscar thought the safest choice for all concerned was to A. Just let it ring, let voicemail get the call, call back later. When Oscar parked the car, he retrieved his V-mail and called back Trudy to say he was driving and decided since the sun was glaring in his eyes and he didn't get a chance to get his mom's headset that he shouldn't pick up the phone. Oscar used the extra drive time to dream up a good plan to still go surfing and go to the mall with Trudy. Whew, that was a close one. And now, a special wrap-up report from the License with Poetic License, my esteemed colleague, Walter Backover. Distractions. They'll always be part of the driving experience. Ultimately, it's up to you to drive smart. Focus on the road and drive with both hands on the wheel. When you do use your wireless phone, just consider the following points and you'll be driving smarter and safer. Stop driving and find a safe spot off the road when you need to make a call. Allow your voicemail to answer calls when you are driving. 
Free up your hands. Use a hands-free device. Exercise your memory. Know your keypad. Remember to check your state and local laws on wireless phone use. And lastly, remember, not everyone driving out there has a high VIQ. So be alert for them. Well, that's it for this edition of VIQ. We've got many miles ahead of us. So remember, don't eat weird stuff. Don't forget, important appointments. And don't drive and feed birds at the same time. Always drive responsibly. Call with care. Be a genius on the road. Show off your VIQ. Drive smart. <laughs>